In this chapter, uh, we're going to be talking about global illumination in V-Ray. As you can see in our little simple test scene that we got going on here, I um, just kind of created a little torus ring to cast some GI into our scene. And I want you to notice that this is actually the only light source in the scene. Um, let's take a peek over at our render settings. And you can see we've got in our GI tab, we do have our irradiance map turned on and our secondary bounce is set to light cache. Uh, the main thing to understand with global illumination in V-Ray, what we're going to be talking about in this uh, video is going to be the three main GI types that we're going to be dealing with uh, most of the time. I'm actually not really going to get into photon mapping. We don't ever really use it that much anymore. Um, the three main types of GI are going to be these two right here, irradiance map and light cache. And lastly, brute force. Uh, brute force is actually sampled every single pixel. And it's really commonly used in conjunction with the light cache. So you can see the difference here. So this is my irradiance map that's sampled very, very poorly. You can see all the splotchiness that we got going on here it just looks terrible. Um, also looks like a fractal, but that's actually just simply the GI information just not being sampled enough. So now let's take a look at brute force instead. So it did the light cache. And now what we've got is a extremely grainy image of our brute force GI. Uh, even though it seems kind of weird, this is actually going to be much more accurate than a radiance map. Uh, the catch is that it's a lot slower. It's sampling every single pixel one for one for the exact amount of GI. So this subdiv value in the brute force GI ties in directly to our adaptive DMC, just like shadow samples or reflection samples. So right now I'm at one and four. Um, let's go ahead and crank this up to like 64. And let's just do a little test render here. You can see that the render is definitely chugging along here. Um, but we've actually created a very clean um, result for our brute force GI. I paused it to let that finish. You can actually see it took a minute and 25 seconds for this one little block. Um, that's kind of ridiculous. And just so you know, brute force GI, even though my little simple scene here. The reason I'm doing this, these simple scenes is so they will render faster, so I don't have to sit here and wait so much, but the Brute Force GI is really for animation. Um, a Radiance Map and Light Cache together are extremely powerful because we can actually bake them out. Um, but Brute Force is really great for really quickly moving animated objects where you really need that perfect quality GI in your scene. Um, a good example would be if there was really small detail running across the surface of your objects that was emitting indirect light. You may want that to be brute force GI to get the accuracy, but you are going to take a pretty tough render hit here. Um, if I actually combine this with some direct light as well, so let's. Uh, oop! Already had my already had my outliner open there. Uh, if I unhide my key light. And let's just, um, it's the same, same light as before. Let's just knock the intensity back down to 10. And now let's do that same render again. So it's kind of an interesting thing, the way, the way V-Ray works. You can see the render time actually dropped pretty significantly, down to 52 seconds, even though I added complexity to the scene. Um, but because a lot of the scene was able to be, you know, contributed to those direct light rays rather than purely the GI, it actually did a nicer job uh, figuring out the GI, um, and it was able to render the whole image a little bit faster. So it's a little daunting if I do a test like that when it's just pure GI, nothing but GI, um, brute force GI with the samples cranked up. But in general, there's definitely a little bit of, uh, it's, it's really not as bad as it seems. And there may be some situations where you need brute force GI. Um, the depth right here is just in regards to refraction, how many times you want that GI ray to bounce through the GI refractive caustics right here. 
Um, but yeah, so in general, the Brute Force GI has its place, and it actually did get a massive speed increase in V-Ray 3, um, but a lot of times we're going to be focusing on the Irradiance map and Light Cache combo. Uh, so let's start talking about that. And I'm actually going to hide my key light again so that we can focus only on the GI. And the Irradiance map uh, is very similar to Final Gather if you're used to using Mental Ray. Uh, it's essentially a point cloud of light bouncing around, and it can be baked out. Same with the light cache. Um, you can see in this test render that we're using right now, it's actually pretty crappy quality. And let's first talk about the way to improve the quality of first the Radiance map, second we'll do the light cache. So the Radiance map, we have a uh, two main uh, settings here. And if you're not using V-Ray 3 and watching this video, this is going to look pretty different. Um, in V-Ray 3, they, they really kind of hid a lot of the uh, advanced stuff. Like A lot of this used to be up here. Um, and you really don't need to mess with it that much. And so it's kind of nice that they tucked it away. These two settings are really the only two that you're going to need. Um, We've got our subdivs first. So the subdivs are is essentially the number of points in your scene. You can see if I set this up to 200, render again. Actually, it wasn't that bad. Only, only 16 seconds. But you can see that we've got a much cleaner background. It's actually almost casting some area uh, light type shadows in the GI, the same as the brute force was. Um, we've definitely still got a little bit of uh, color splotchiness back here, but it's cleaned up pretty pretty dramatically. Um, it did take a... We saw it kind of calculating there in the beginning. It did take quite a bit longer, though, to calculate that irradiance map. So something to bring up is our second control for our irradiance map, and that's the interpolate samples. Uh, this interpolate samples could also be called a blur, um, like a irradiance map does Gaussian blur, it increases the size of the samples and softens them. Uh, so you can actually get away with less with a little bit higher of this interpolate samples. And let's just do maybe like a little strip, I guess like that. And we'll render this out. So you can see that's going faster because I went down to 150 subdivs. And it's actually a little bit cleaner. Um, you can see if I zoom in here. There's a definitely a little bit of splotchiness. Um, I could even try increasing my interpolate samples a little bit more. But what you'll start finding is that in areas like this shadow, where I used to have a little bit of sharpness in that GI shadow, um, and again, if I set that, so before I was actually generating shadow underneath of the sphere, uh, and now I'm just kind of blurring it all away. But what I've gained is that this background that used to have some color splotchiness is uh, now nice and soft. So there's a push and pull with this, and it's all about balancing render times versus the quality here. Um, so in general, I tend to at least increase this interpolate samples to like 30 and then I try to rely on only sub only subdiv increases so that the quality stays high in the irradiance map but if you have a really complex scene you may end up realizing that you have to do some lower subdivs and higher interpolate samples just to get the irradiance map kicked out moving down to the light cache the light cache is a little bit harder to figure out exactly what's going on uh, so I actually like to think of it more as a rule of thumb. And that's going to be in your subdivs here. Um, if you feel like you're getting any sort of flickering um, in the light cache, uh, and usually that looks like points of light that will stick out, like maybe a diamond shape um, that will poke out from the objects, and they kind of just look like a little firework goes off, then 
Or if you have a lot of small detail in your scene, it's usually a good idea to have your subdivs equal um, around the horizontal resolution, which is usually the longer resolution. And if you have a simpler scene, lower detail, then you can do the vertical resolution instead. The light cache also does have its own blur associated to it, and that's this guy right here under filter samples in the advanced section. Um, so if you do feel like a little bit of softness will help get rid of any flickering that's happening in that light cache, you can crank that up as well. Um, another nice little checkbox that's worth testing is this use light cache for glossy rays. Now I do have some glossy reflection right here. So let's see if it does anything. And so you can see it's pretty subtle, but even though there's still some noise in there, it actually did help get rid of a couple little fireflies and it sort of just evened it out a little bit. It got a little duller though, so you definitely want to be careful with it. It is an interesting option though. Um, oops, sorry. It, uh, so sometimes I'll just turn it on, and if I have a scene with a lot of glossy reflections, it can save a significant amount of render time. Um, so you can see here, if I actually go in on my shader now, and let's go to my reflection subdivs. Let's crank that up. Turn off our A. So that's cleaner and took 4.4 seconds. Uh, now let's turn off our use light cache for glossy rays. Uh, click render. Something again worth mentioning, this is on by default in V-Ray 3, but if you're on an older version, it may not be. This use retrace threshold does need to be on for use light cache for glossy rays to work. Um, so you can see pretty significant render time uh, change. So 6.4 seconds just for this one little scene. Uh, but how does it compare in quality? So here's our 4.2 seconds. We can set that to A. So, I mean, that looks pretty good. Uh, really no complaints with this. It, it seems, so, seems to work really well. So it's a really nice little feature to kind of go in there and play around with. Um, definitely still did a nice job so I guess what would happen you know just if I was to bring another sphere right in here real close so I mean seems to be working pretty well um, no complaints there uh, again like I said it I found that every once in a while I turn it on and I feel like the quality of the reflections just goes down um, and it seems like it's doing something weird. So just click it on, see what it does, and then you can click it back off again. Um, one last setting in the radiance map that's definitely worth mentioning is in the advanced rollout, and it's this check sample visibility. And this is kind of a hard, uh, it's a little bit of a tricky thing to actually show um, without a really specific example setup. Um, but essentially, if you have a thin surface, you may get um, some color bleed from one side to the other on the irradiance map. So let's see if we can set that up. Okay. And now let's render this out. Actually, we'll turn off check sample visibility first. And so you can see, I guess it's not that hard of a thing to, to show, but what's happening is the irradiance map sample is is actually kind of landing right on the edge and blurring through, you know, that's actually the size of that sample. And so I'm getting that brightness on the backside. If I turn on this check sample visibility, you can see that my old render took 10.5 seconds. Now we'll do one more. So you can see, actually, my I, this isn't the same render region as before. My Maya kind of bugged out, had to do a test render in between. But um, 
I did another one with and without, and it went from 7.9 to 8 seconds. And you can see uh, if I do set A, in this situation, it really, you know, if I, if I zoom in here, you can see it's changing. But because this is so small and my irradiance maps sampling so soft, uh, I need to have simply more quality to fix this. Um, and this could actually be a situation where I want brute force. Uh, you can see if I make that uh, cube a little thicker, might help take care of that little bright spot of leaked light that we're getting. It is starting to get a little bit better. Um, but you can see if I scroll up here, a really good way to handle this if it happens uh, is to start trying these other presets that you have. So even if I try high animation, that's going to start adding additional passes into the irradiance map. And when I add those additional passes, um, what you'll start seeing is, you can see it actually completely took care of that. Uh, I was able to fully figure it out. And now if I go down and let's just turn off check sample visibility, so that's 13.4 seconds. Um, and then with check sample visibility back off again, we went down to 12.1 seconds. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit, a little bit different. Uh, it's um, the situation I created with that really thin cube I actually just didn't simply have enough quality to be able to even take care of it. Um, but in general, the check sample visibility didn't help me too much in this situation, but it doesn't add a ton of render time and it will go in and do its best to help you with some of those uh, little splotches of light that leak through. So in general, I do click it on most of the time. So the next thing that we should discuss here uh, in relation to global illumination is going to be the baking of our GI map. So let's actually create a little camera move here. Let's go over my shot cam. I'm just going to delete that cube. And unlock our shot cam. And I'm just going to set a keyframe on frame one. And then I'm going to go to frame 24 here. And we'll just kind of do a little tilt up and set another keyframe. So that's good enough for what we need. Actually, maybe we'll just add a little bit of a rotation. There we go. So really simple camera move. Um, what I want to show with this, uh, V-Ray has the ability to analyze and bake out the entire um, range of your camera motion. So it can save a lot of time with animation. Um, if you have like a camera move moving through an environment, they actually designed it for architects originally for fly throughs and buildings, but now it's really useful in VFX as well. Um, so if I go to my radiance map section, you can see this use camera path checkbox. I can turn that on and the uh, light cache has the exact same thing. We can turn on use camera path and that's essentially it. And when I hit render here, um, what you'll see is a kind of blurry version of the light cache, and the irradiance map is actually a little bit blurred as well. You can see as it kind of dials in here, there's almost feels like there's motion blur or something inside of it. And that's how I know that it's working. It's actually going in and analyzing the entire range of your GI. You can see it kind of snaps back to that first frame now. Um, it does mention in the documentation to use a little bit of extra subdivs because it is spreading out the subdivisions across a whole camera move. So if you have a lot of movement, you may find you need to increase your subdivisions by quite a bit. Um, a higher render time is kind of okay with this because the next step is we're going to save out this file so we don't have to do it anymore. We only have to calculate our GI once when we're baking it out. Um, so V-Ray has a couple useful tools uh, to help with this. And first, let's talk about the, the way V-Ray is storing these GI map files. You can see that it's actually got it in memory at the moment. Um, you can see both the light cache and the irradiance map right here. They say, you know, however many samples, blah, 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 however big the size is. And you have the option, if I decide this is perfect, 
I can save out this file manually by clicking the Save button. And I can browse over to our project here, and I'll just put it into, uh, where should I put it? I guess, scenes? And I'll just make a new folder here for GI maps. And then I'll just call this Irradiance version one. I'm actually gonna copy this path. And now if I wanted to just load up that irradiance map, I can say from file instead of single frame mode, and I can simply browse and I can load up that file. And I can do the same thing down here with the light cache. And so this will just be LC version one. We'll change my mode to from file. And now I'll browse and I'll load up that light cache. And now if I do a quick test render, it's actually just going to immediately start rendering. Uh, if I go to a different frame, same deal. We've got GI spread out across our whole image. Um, you can actually see this if I back out a little bit. Let me go my perspective view, render this out. You can, it's kind of interesting. You can see exactly where it actually baked out that GI. So it's kind of a cool effect. Um, looks like a watercolor painting or something. And let's go back to our shot cam. So we can actually even make this even better. Um, so V-Ray has these nice options down here for on render uh, backend. You can say don't delete the file and auto save it. So let's change this back to single frame. Actually, let me copy that path since that's the path I need. And I'm going to say auto save file, but this time I'm just going to save the map out as a Radiance version 2. And then let's copy my light cache. We'll set this back to single frame, paste that path into my auto save file button. Uh, and you can see if I open up um, a browser. There we go. So there's our version one and version two, but now with single frame turned on for both and auto save set to save out version two, uh, when I hit render here, and if I can find that browser, you can see that it just saved out version two of the light cache. And whenever it's done with the radiance map, uh, it's going to kick that out and there's our version two of the irradiance map. So pretty nice little feature. And now if I wanted to bounce this back to from file, I can just save that and set it to version two and set it to version two. So very easy to script as well. A lot of people have inc uh, included this in their pipeline tools at studio so that they can, you know, you can have a little uh, GI baking tool set to go in and uh, get everything set up. So baking GI in V-Ray um, has actually gotten quite a bit easier in my opinion. They really, you know, they're, they're, there's all these modes if you want to deal with animation and that kind of thing. But in general, the only time I'm really baking maps with the Radiance map is using this use camera path checkbox with non-animated objects. If I'm dealing with animation at all, I actually think it's better to simply keep uh, to simply keep the irradiance map and the light cache just on single frame and turn off use camera path. I don't need to save anything and just keep cranking the samples up until it looks smooth or switch to brute force mode. Um, I think it's really becomes very difficult to try and bake and blend irradiance maps for anything with complex mo uh, motion. And in general, you get a much nicer result if you just go in, have the samples high enough to give you a nice smooth result. So for example, let's just see one quick test render to try and clear up all of this noise back in here, that kind of the fractally splotchiness. That's my technical term for that. And we'll just do one quick test render. At the end of the day, um, you know, all that splotchiness is cleared up. The render took 44 seconds. 
significantly cleaner than my brute force render, and the irradiance map did a really nice job. So, um, just kind of goes to show the power and strength that it has. It's a really, really nice system to use these two together. Um, and I hope that you have fun playing around with it. Uh, at this point, uh, actually. For that matter, at any point when you're dealing with V-Ray, I think it's a really good idea to just always be you're doing your lighting with GI turned on. Um, it's become so fast and so easy to use. You know, if I set this back to medium and 50 samples, set my light cache back down to 500 samples, uh, you know, I mean, you can see how fast this just loads up. It just blasts through these irradiance maps. And so you want to make sure you always have your GI turned on when you're doing your lighting so that you can really tell the brightness in your scene. If I go, and just as an example, oop, I keep doing that. I already have my outliner open. Let's turn my light back on. Do a quick test render. The difference between this render here uh, with GI turned on, and then if I render this half with GI turned off, is really just drastic. So it's really important to just have that GI on to really see what your shaders look like uh, under normal lighting conditions. So uh, and that's it for our little GI discussion. And hopefully you got the baking down and you'll be a pro at your V-Ray GI ventures. On to the next. <laughs>